Do a web search on hydrogen fuel cell cars, and you will find that all top American, German, and Japanese car manufacturers are currently experimenting with hydrogen technology. These car manufacturers believe, and environmentalists agree, that hydrogen is the perfect alternative renewable fuel solution. Cars fueled by hydrogen leave no trace of pollution except for a bit of clean water vapor. Could this be the perfect solution? Perhaps. But this technology will require a huge multi-billion dollar infrastructure change to make the switch to hydrogen fueling stations. Despite several advances in technology, the reality of a hydrogen-fueled car appearing on the streets is still many decades away. Or worse, may never be, due to impractical and overly complicated fuel cell car design. In the meantime, fossil fuel resources may run out within your children's lifetime. However, there is hope. There is one hydrogen-powered car in the world that doesn't need a filling station. The car you're about to see runs on tap water from your kitchen faucet. It was developed by Daniel Dingell, who invented and drove his first water-powered car over 30 years ago. This is his story. Hi, so we're at the home of Daniel Dingell, Filipino inventor. He's here to show us a few of his inventions, which includes a uh, uh, car fueled with seawater. This is Mr. Daniel Dingo. So I started the, uh, this invention way back 1968. It's already about 30 years ago and I keep still keep improving it and improving it because in any invention there is always room for improvement. It is very difficult to accept that there is one car invented by an ordinary person like him now running on the road, just using water as fuel. But the principle involved is something universal. Just plain hydrolysis of water and using the hydrogen from the water molecule as a fuel. So I started with that and then I... What I did is I went to see the president, former president Marcos, and then explain my invention that could help our economy. The president uh, welcomed the idea, but the problem is <clears throat> there was a coup d'etat, so everything fails. And then comes another president, and to see the uh, president, uh, Cory Aquino, and then as a matter of fact, he ride with the car with me. Uh, he was with me in the car, testing the car. And he said that, uh, this is the miracle I have been waiting for. But uh, sad to say that after uh, two weeks, I was able to know that the government is not in the position to help. Uh, it's not only a matter of scientific uh, problem that we are confronted with. In fact, uh, it becomes, the issue becomes more political than anything else. Because under the agreement between the IMF and the World Bank, our country is under obligation by the IMF and the World Bank, not to produce anything that will compete their product. So, and then, so the 40% oil tax, there will be no more revenue for the government. But I told him that, sir, it will prolong the life of the people because there will be no more pollution. So I keep working on it and then improving my invention, maybe thinking that one day, someday, uh, maybe this invention will be used and uh, it will help humanity. Now we go to the car. This here is the water. You need one liter of water to run for one hour. Yeah. You see this one here? Oh, there you go. You see, uh, that is water, okay? So when you put that one there, it's light. But that is water already. See, this one here is water. Oh. It is not supposed to, to light the, the bulb. 
because it's supposed to destroy because there is water. It's like in electricity when there is water. See that water here? You, you touch the you touch the the water. There is no current. But it there is a current in it, see? But there is light. You see? So you remove that. See, there is the water. That is uh, the easiest way to split the water. Now here is the switch. You put the switch on here, or uh, using that battery, see immediately hydrogen oxygen uh, is being produced. Oh. See? Then the bigger the bigger uh, balls there goes in here, it goes to the uh, here and then it goes direct to the combustion chamber. But there is a regulator here which regulates the hydrogen that is needed in the engine. See? And then the oxygen goes here. So what uh, you when you start the engine, you remove this, the engine stops. Okay, now then he, no, I'll show you. You remove the battery. So you see the, the battery. That using only one battery. Alright, I'll sit put this switch on. See? No, 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 no lights without battery. And then you put the battery. Oh, you see. So there is already the splitting of hydrogen. Using only that small battery. Mm. I was able to split the water uh, in a very minimal car current. That is the trade secret of the invention. You start the engine and start. See? You need about four to five turns before it runs because there is no fuel pump. It creates first hydrogen being sucked into the intake manifold. Since hydrogen is 14 times lighter than air, it goes immediately to the combustion chamber. So what you do here, you remove this one here. Uh, this is the fuel cyst line. You remove this, the engine stops. You smell. You smell if there is fuel. If you, is this water? Yeah. No, no, you smell it. If there is gasoline. Nope. Oh. That is not working. Oh, so yeah. you start the start. Start. You see, without this, it won't start. Now you put this one here. So the water runs the uh, No, there is, they say that there, maybe there is gasoline heat in there. You cannot mix hydrogen with gasoline. Yeah. You cannot mix hydrogen, I uh, know, uh, gasoline with water. And then you see the idling. It's only about 600 RPM. <clears throat> and it's very smooth. How long have you had to start driving this? Four years. When I, when this, I bought this four years ago, then I test it and test it and test it after testing it. We remove the engine, dismantle the engine, get all the data before and after. So we've been working this for almost 30 years, improving it, improving it. So um, your other cars that, that run on hydrogen? This one runs on hydrogen. Yeah, do you, you, have, you said you had other cars that run on hydrogen? Six yeah. Other cars? Mm -hmm. All of them? Yeah, it's in the farm. Yeah. Yeah, we have a farm. Um, what's the oldest car that you've had? running on hydrogen? No, we started from Chevrolet, then Buick, Pontiac, and then up to La, uh, Mitsubishi, and then Toyota. Yeah. So how many years ago was the earliest car driving on hydrogen? How long? Yung oh, pinakauna. Oh, long time ago, 1969. We are already uh, transforming it into H2O. So uh, we got 100 of these already working in my farm. We plan to to modify it to water and then give it all to all countries who are interested to use it. So what they do, they run the engine, then they copy what is inside, then they can build it, they can modify it and improve it. And then we'll have a joint partnership. That is my idea. The world will have something say about the Filipinos having, been, having had a very significant contribution for the progress of mankind yeah. and for protecting the environment especially. Well, some people are afraid to uh, use a hydrogen car because they think it's a highly combustible engine. Yeah. Mr. Hydrogen from Switzerland came here and what he asked me is, are you not afraid that hydrogen will explode? Like what you have seen, how the power of the explosion. I said, if I know the meaning of explosion, I would not have done it. That is the reason I was able to do it, because I don't know the meaning of explosion. Right? <laughs> because you know why, the, why, why it will not explode? Because another invention that I made, you fill this aluminum 
right into your tongue, and then you get a, a fire, a torch. You will dig your tongue with gasoline. It will not explode. So you fill this up with your tongue. Uh -huh. It will not explode. It will just, uh, the flame will just be there. No explosion. This happens to my car. Uh -huh. The car was tested by, by the German people. They came here, they had it tested, and then the, they make some proposals, but uh, I didn't like the proposal. It is a one-sided proposal. You, maybe about 10 big corporations from Japan came here, uh, then they have tested the car. But the way I look at it, they want to steal the, the technology of the invention, because the invention is so big that no person would like to share. So what I want is uh, put up uh, the the income, or what I want to share is that I can get from all these inventions that will be produced by any other investors or interested investors. Put up a foundation for the Filipino people. That is my dream. Not directly to the government, but directly to the people. Hoping that uh, maybe with the blessings of the good Lord, I can accomplish it if I still live. So I know that it, it's not so far away but maybe it's just around the corner because the invention is there and it works. So is there a warm-up time or anything? No, no warm-up time. And this car is four years old, driving on water. Yeah. <laughs> What's the click or sound? Yeah, no, that is something to do with the uh, production of more, more current, more electricity. When you are on the highway, you see the the power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how much water is that? That's about seven liters. And it's seawater, not mineral water, or no, it's so much to do there because uh, organ uh, ordinary water, like let's like, say tap water. The higher the salt content, the better? Or? Yeah, the higher the salt, right Like uh, uh, producing uh, AB water from salt water, which is, you know, deuterium. So the Mississippi River would be too much for the poor world to use. As you burn it, it goes into the atmosphere, converted back into water, water vapor, hydrogen, and oxygen, water vapor, then the class will form, then they contest, come back to the earth again. For the longer time, we don't use it, the oil magnets become all the more happier. So their era is about to pass, but they have had their share of the wealth of the whole world already. This car is no mystery, it's something real.